if you're interested in public health, then you have to be interested in tobacco control because it is the biggest, by a large margin, preventable cause of de disease and death in the world today. So let's get into it. Now, what a lot of people don't understand is that about half of, that's 50% of the people who smoke die because of smoking-related causes, right? So if you're, if you're a smoker, and it's, it's flipping a coin, it's, there's a 50% chance it's going to kill you. That's unbelievable, right? About 8 million people every year die from tobacco-related causes. 7 million of those, it's direct use, and 1.2 million die of secondhand smoke, right? So it's, it's a huge problem. It's unbelievable. It, it dwarfs almost anything else that we need to address in terms of a public health issue. And just so that you know, this channel is sponsored by Nested Knowledge. That's a platform that supports systematic literature review and meta-analysis. They're absolutely amazing. Check out the link in the description below. And with that, on with the lesson. So let's just talk about a few of the things that we know that we can do in terms of tobacco control, right? And the first, of course, is education and outreach. And that it stands to reason. We need to inform people of the risks and the dangers of smoke. Uh, and, and that goes along the lines of telling people that if you're a smoker, you've got a 50% chance of dying because you, because you smoke. There's a lot of science around how best, and I'm not gonna get into it in this video, about how to best impact on behavioral change, right? And there's, there's, there's a whole discipline called behavioral economics, uh, and that's really worth getting to know and understand if you're interested in this kind of work. Now, it's one thing just telling people that they should smoke and telling them why it's bad, et cetera, et cetera, but there is also space, and it's important to provide actual formal smoking cessation programs that provide support to people who have taken a decision to try and smoke, right? Now, here is a book that I'm gonna dip into many, many times for years to come. It's Public Health and Society Current Issues. I read the book, absolutely full of gems, insights, useful information. I cannot recommend this book highly enough. Please take a look. If you're interested in public health, in any aspect of public health, this book is gonna be useful to you. There's gonna be a link in the description below. Click on the link, buy the book, give it a read. Okay, on with the video. And this can include uh, nicotine replacement therapy that gets provided to them. Um, counseling if they needed, uh, support groups, etc. There's lots that can be done and should be done. And it is, without doubt, an area that's worth investing in because it really translates into significant results. Next, regulation and legislation. The WHO's Framework Convention on Tobacco Control has been a huge success in terms of addressing tobacco use. Now, the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, or the FCTC, has been ratified by most countries around the world. And it addresses issues like tobacco tax, which we know by increasing the price of cigarettes, people are less likely to smoke, uh, advertising, tobacco advertising, et cetera, et cetera. It's got a couple of things. I'm not going to get into all of them in this video. But the point is, legislation and regulation goes a long way into preventing people from smoking or addressing demand for cigarettes. And finally, research. We have to undertake research. We have to invest in research if we're going to really understand which interventions are effective, what it is that we can do, what we shouldn't do in terms of trying to address this massive public health problem. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay and watch another video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't before. My name is Greg Martin. Don't ever change. Don't do drugs. Always do your best. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.